Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Wee Knives Vision R. This is a collaboration between Wee Knives and Snack 10, and a very interesting knife. First off, though, in the name of full disclosure, I gotta let you know, this was sent to me by Wee Knives. They reached out to me, said, hey Nick, we got the vision, you interested? And absolutely I was, right? Um, Snack is a, a very well-known designer, it's nice to see some of his stuff reach in production. I was very curious how it was gonna be, but I told him, as always, I'm gonna talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, it might be a gem, it might be junk. They did still say it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. This is not a small knife, uh, particularly. Here it is against, uh, oh, come here, size comparison knives. Here it is against a Spyderco PM2. This particular one is wearing a fancy pair of pants, but at the same time, it shows you the size of a PM2 quite well we see here is that in terms of overall blade length, they're actually very, very similar. I'll go ahead and measure it up real quick so you can see. This guy is coming in right around three and a half inches. Maybe could be measured over if the cop really doesn't like it. But at the same time, uh, th th there is that. Here it is against the Ontario Rat number two right here and against the Spydeco Delica. And what we're going to see here is, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, not a particularly tiny knife right here. But at the same time, there, there is that. Next thing, who the heck is Snack Tan? Well, Snack Tan is a, he's a designer who's actually been around the knife world for a while, but mostly making uh, relatively low volume sort of customs. But he's done some innovative things, not the least of which being this new lock right here. Um, this lock is very interesting. And if you watch my disassembly video, you'll get a better sense of exactly how it works. But it works very well. We've seen a very similar lock actually commercialized by Sandrin, uh, who used uh, the, the, the same... Uh, lock that Snack provided out there uh, in the world, but this is uh, the, maybe the first Snack branded instantiation of that particular thing, and it's being done with Wee Knives. Wee Knives is a uh, Chinese company. They've done a, a lot of good work in the past, and so let's go on ahead and talk about the good and the not so good about this guy, because ultimately that, that that's kind of where I ended up landing with it, and it didn't end up getting that much carry. We'll talk a little bit about why. So on the good side, to start with, um, the price on this guy is actually not bad. This is a uh, 20 CV knife. It's full titanium, and it's actually, it's pretty well made in the sense that, you know, if you look inside, you've got all kinds of little internal milling bits. They've really made a strong effort, it feels like, to remove as much weight as they could to make this, uh, you know, to, to really do this right. And, you know, even the finishing on the blade is nice. The sharpness out of the box is very good. The grind is nice. I'd say, you know, honestly, uh, of all things considered, 270 for this feels pretty decent. That's, that's not a bad price at all. Next thing, this does have a nice little trick, which is that it is very easy to clean off the lock bar here because all you need to do is lift it out like that and then you can go ahead wipe it off clean it off whatever and then without taking the knife apart pull it back and then push it back in and so now the knife is back as expected is this crucial no, not particularly. Is it cool, though? Yeah, absolutely. And it's very easy then also, if you get any kind of gunk up in here, to clean this little bit out because, well, it's all exposed. So that's a nice thing. Next thing, this guy is fully ambidextrous. And I mean that in the sense that a lefty has exactly the same experience as a righty. Um, and uniquely, they, they have that experience without moving the clip around. We're going to talk more about this clip a little bit later on, 100%. But at the same time, the one benefit it really has is that it is fully ambidextrous. And because the hole is present on both sides and the lock is in the middle and the clip is in the middle, this can carry just as well or perhaps not as well, uh, on either side, uh, right or left side. So it is a fully ambidextrous knife, and that is a nice thing. Uh, about 10% of the population is going to be a big fan of that. And it's always good to see makers, you know, uh, prioritizing that kind of an experience for folks. That's good. Next thing, the blade on this is probably... Maybe the action is my favorite part, but the blade on this is very close to being my favorite part because it is well done. It's 20 CV, and it comes down to a very nice, deliciously thin edge. It works very well in the hand, and the, the overall shape of it is kind of a sheep's footy sort of thing that just works well. This is a good blade. It's a very nice blade for utility cutting. It's well done. It's well ground. The shape is nice. This is absolutely 100% a very, very nice knife in that way. And then finally, the action on this is great. Because there is literally nothing touching the blade as you are using this guy uh, when you've got the lock back. Uh, it has just a beautiful fall shot sort of action, but because you have access to that lock, you are very much under control, and your fingers are nowhere near the slicing path, which is a very nice thing. So I very much like the action here. It is very smooth. It's very easy to deploy, although the detent is quite soft. Um, it, it is reliably deployable with a little bit of wrist action. Uh, it, it is, that is nice. And so to me, uh, what's good here is that it has a very smooth action. It's a very nice slice.
slicey blade. It is fully ambidextrous. It's easy to clean out the lock area, and the price on this guy actually feels pretty reasonable. Unfortunately, there is some bad here, too. Um, first off, the ergonomics on this guy are not amazing, right? Most of it is fine, but the clip, and this is going to be a theme here, but the clip. The clip, unfortunately, is digging up into your palm as you're using this, as is this little area here, although this is rounded off enough that it's it's largely okay, but it's still. Um, it, this is not ergonomically my favorite knife. It could be that different hands are going to have a different experience with it, but to me, this, this isn't great ergonomically. It is very well stuck in the hand because of these holes here. Makes it very easy for your you know, fingers to stay in the right position. And if you choke back a little bit, unfortunately, it gets even worse because you get here as well as here. So ergonomically speaking, it's not particularly great. And I don't like the prominence of this lock bar sticking up as high as it does relative to, for instance, on some of the other options here. I'll just grab one from, uh, from Sandrin. Uh, which have the lock bar much, much lower here. Um, I, I'm not a big, big fan of that big stick up at the top there. It definitely makes it a little bit, uh, eh, just makes it less comfy. Next thing, unfortunately, the detent on this guy is relatively weak, right? I can do this, and this guy pops open pretty straightforwardly, right? This has not a very strong detent, and it makes sense. Oop, ah, there we go. It makes sense why. Unfortunately, if you take a look, the thing that is giving this knife a detent is actually the pressure of the spring of the, the lock here, which is pressing, it's a compression spring, and it's pressing back up against this and needs to slide up and over this little gap here in order for it to work. And so, unfortunately, although it is enough, if you use a little bit of wrist, you can reliably get this guy to open. I find this detent to be very, very weak, and particularly in the pocket, and if there is anything, uh, uh, you know, touching or uh, pressing on this lock bar, the knife sort of comes open roughly on its own. And that's even worse when it is in a vertical position, uh, which we will get back to later. Next thing, I gotta say, the lock here is, it's fine. It's nice to see another ergonomic lock and it absolutely locks up solidly. There's no play or anything like that in any direction. It works perfectly well as a lock, but I gotta say, I don't know that it's winning all that much here. Um, it's, it's absolutely good to go. And again, I can see with some changes here, I'd probably be a lot more friendly to it, but you know, right now it kind of feels like a solution in search of a problem. Maybe a future design will really push the edges of what this lock offers us with nothing else uh, that nothing else will. But for the moment, uh, although I do like that free swinging action, and that is a nice thing, I don't know that it's nice enough in and of itself to kind of justify that lock. Next thing, unfortunately, the clip on this guy. Hmm. I don't like this clip. Unfortunately, what they've done here is they've put the clip on the back side of the knife. And at some level, it's like, oh, wow, that's different. That's new. That makes sense. But the problem is, Unfortunately, it just doesn't want to carry well. It's kind of like they took the Graham clip. Do I have a Graham clip installed? Yeah, I do. This is a, a CRKT Graham razel, uh, folding razel. And what John Graham did is he had the insight uh, to put the clip on the front of the knife. And this is given a weird instantiation of it. But this way, the knife can just kind of sit in the corner of your pocket. The blade is sticking out up against the side of your pocket there. Everything is put very clearly in place. And then the clip is not interacting with the blade here, uh, at least certainly in a perfect world. Uh, where it was instantiated as Graham would want it to be, perhaps. Uh, this is a very nice clip design. I like it a lot, and it's although it's controversial, it is, in my estimation, very, very good. This looks like it kind of looked at that, but then didn't quite... Hmm, I don't know. Because the issue with it is that how does this carry in your pocket, right? So let's say that you've got the you got this guy in your pocket here, right? So here's your pocket. Um, you kind of slip this guy onto the pocket, and there are one of two ways that you can carry it. You can either kind of reverse the pocket, like pull it up under so that it is up against the inside of the seam there, and then the problem is if your pocket opens at all, this will swing back around so that it is facing the larger cavity. But more likely what's happening is that this clip is at the corner of your pocket and then the blade is kind of facing out into the pocket itself. And unfortunately, this just, it ended up carrying very strangely and it had a, a, a ten, basically a tendency to suddenly kind of flip and then if your pocket opens at all, then it kind of presses the knife vertically up against your pen. This might be more of an issue with some pants than others, right? I can't rule that out. I really only tested it with the pants I wear, but still, that was just not a great approach. And the other issue is that it is currently tip, uh, tip up only, which makes the blade much more able to open there. Uh, this might have been better if it were done tip down, although that would have interfered with the lock. But either way, I don't like this clip. I think this clip is a very, very bad design choice here. And uh, ultimately, I don't get why they went this route. But more importantly, unfortunately, the clip 
combined with those other things, left me very uneasy carrying this knife. Now, of course, this is my own opinion, right? Everybody is well welcome to disagree with me, and I know a number of folks do. But for me, there was a trifecta here. The detent, as I mentioned, is pretty weak, and it makes the blade open pretty easily. The clip wants the knife to have the blade. The way that it ended up carrying for me ended up making it so that the blade is very often pointing out towards the rest of my pocket, giving it ample space to open up. And then the lock bar down here is pretty big and pretty prominent, meaning that if anything presses against that while it's in your pocket, this guy could come falling open in your pocket. This, to me, that combination of three things, it feels like it offers a very, you know, a non-zero possibility for opening up in the pocket, which is among the very worst things that a pocket knife can do. If we compare that to another tip-down knife with a more conventional clip, what you're going to see is the clip is on the side here, and then this puts the blade of the knife up against the fabric of the pocket, such that if something were to happen, if you were to engage with the flip -a tab or something like that, Worst thing that happens is that the blade tries to push up against the fabric of the pocket, and it doesn't. And most of the time, you're going to have a, uh, a strong detent in there keeping that from happening at all, right? So unfortunately, this has that confluence of those three things, a weak detent, a clip that wants this to face out into the pocket, and then potentially, and this, you know, given is, is a little less likely, but this could absolutely press up against something and open that up there. This, to me, like I said, makes it feel like it could open up in there. There was just not a way to carry this where I felt comfortable with the knife in my front pocket. You could absolutely do this in a back pocket, right, where there's going to be constant tension, and if you kind of push it up so that the blade is against the back side of the pocket there, and the, the fabric is kind of folded up underneath there, and, like, you can pull that off, right? That'll stay that way. Or if you have, like, a narrow slot sort of pocket on your pants, like if you're wearing carpeted pants that have a, a slot this big, yeah, it's not going to be a major issue. Or, frankly, like, if you've got a really deep fifth pocket, uh, then and this could absolutely work. But the problem is, I just, I found it creepy. This does not mean that it is dangerous. And it never did open, ac uh, like, accidentally during my normal, you know, well, I'm sorry, during my limited period of carry here. And I will fully admit that, thinking rationally, the probability of this happening is probably pretty low. But it was just enough that I didn't want to carry it. Certainly, everybody has different tolerance for these kinds of things, and I know that some people don't mind it and aren't concerned at all and love the knife, but this to me felt like a massive flaw because it didn't have to be this way, right? They could have adjusted a number of different things. If they put the clip on the side here where it normally goes, this would be a non-issue because then the knife itself would be up against the fabric there, and having a weak detent doesn't matter. If they had a strong detent, then I'd be much less concerned even with the blade sitting here in a position to open up if it needs to. And by the way, also something catches in the thing inside your pocket, that's a possibility too. But either way, there's a, just a confluence of problems that made this seem a little bit more possible. And in a world where this isn't a question or a possibility for every other knife in my collection, thanks to better clip design, stronger detents, all kinds of other things, or at least if it was a possibility, it's a very, very low order of magnitude lower. It, it was just really hard for me to look at this guy and throw it in the pocket when this was a potential problem, however remote, because the consequences would not be pleasant. And unfortunately for me, this ended up killing the knife, right? This might not bother you at all. You might be looking at this and going, oh my God, how paranoid are you? And you know what? You're probably not wrong. But at the same time, for me, it was just really bothersome. And so that, to me, was the bad, is that the knife, unfortunately, had that confluence of things that made me really uneasy with carrying it. The clip, I think, is a bad design, sort of, regardless. The lock doesn't feel like it's winning you all that much here, although that's forgivable. The detent is a little bit weak. Actually, it's pretty substantially weak. And the ergos on this guy are not great, although it's not too big of a deal. And to me, that, 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 that's all I gotta say, so to speak. So final conclusion... I'm really frustrated here because this is a solid cutting tool, right? It's got a nice blade, it's got easy cleaning, full ambidextrous action, a reasonable price, and it, it's just, it's super smooth, right? That That is the nice thing about this lock. It's just like, this experience is great. That feels good. But then, unfortunately, it's kind of a miss with the uh, iffy ergos, the weak detent, the bad clip, and what felt like a massive design flaw, which I found very disconcerting personally, and which kind of killed the knife for me. 
And so ultimately, this is a knife I appreciate, but it kind of feels to me like a prototype that got shipped. This feels to me like a case where we knives needed to do some editing and say, okay, Snack, I, hold on, I see your vision here. Huh? Huh? But is this, is this really the right idea? Should we have the blade facing out into the pocket with this weak detent? Like, I, I feel like they could have asked that question. Because, you know, sure, custom shipped this way, but that's something that's acceptable in a custom that's maybe not really ever carried and, frankly, wouldn't be acceptable for me in a custom either. But, um, and it may not be something that we want, though, on a daily carry sort of production knife. And although I know it doesn't bother a lot of folks, this design choice and the risk that I feel like it adds, and given, again, small risk, and this is just my opinion, it ended up bothering me a lot. It ended up making me reluctant to carry this knife, and ultimately, that's the reason why, everything else aside, I don't feel right recommending this knife to my viewers. Hopefully, it's a complete non-issue, and I am just being completely paranoid and wild, but at the same time, it just made me very uncomfortable, and that 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 is a big part of my review, which, again, is a shame, because this was a great knife, right? It has a great blade. It has a fine lock. It's got a very nice action, and I can see that a lot of folks already appreciate the knife as it is. They don't share my concerns, but my hope is that there is a Wii Vision R2 coming with a conventional pocket clip, ideally an ambidextrous clip that will carry a little bit more normally and not offer that thing. So if you can tuck that blade up against the pocket, strengthen that detent a little bit, this would be an absolutely wonderful knife. There is so much to love about this guy. Um, and combined with the lock and blade, I can see that being a vision of perfection. But as it now, I'm afraid I just don't see this vision. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.